Excellent. Got it? Cool. Welcome to this edition of the UX team demo. It is August 30th, 2021. Our mission on this team is to make the Stacks blockchain accessible to everyone. This quarter, Q3 to 2021, we have three main objectives. We want to make the Stacks blockchain perceived as competitively fast uh, enough compared to other chains via our wallets and explorer. We want to make sure that new users engage quickly with uh, the blockchain in general uh, and do so safely and easily. And we want to make sure that any apps built by developers uh, this year are sufficiently supported for their launch and go without a hitch. Today, we are going to demo five different things. Uh, we have microblock support in our products. Uh, we have a new uh, sort of way of handling allow versus deny mode for transactions. Uh, we have a new proposal for handling state. Uh, we have onboarding, onboarding work, uh, and we have a uh, design pro pro proposal for post conditions in general. To start us off, uh, Farah and Kyron are going to demo microblocks. You want to go first, Farah? Sure. Let me share my screen. Okay, yeah, uh, microblocks are live now in the Explorer. So you can see them showing up here in the transaction list with this icon representing the transaction has been picked up in the microblock. Um, so if you actually click on one of those and go view the transaction, you can see the status um, up here says included in microblock. Um, and then also in the blocks list, um, the block and its uh, microblocks are listed underneath accordingly. And you can click on a microblock and see its page and all of its information and the transactions included uh, with that. So pretty cool. Great. Move on to the allow mode one with Thomas. No, no, yeah, I'm going to do the web wallet as well. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to demo in test testnet mode just because it's it's easier. Uh, this is uh, begins work uh, really. Um, just going to do a quick demo of uh, microblock transactions. I I'm not sure if we showed uh, any of this before actually, but we'll show it again. Anyway, so th there are really two parts to this. Uh, one is sort of being able to see the uh, transaction come up uh, and go into uh, from pending into a microblock. Uh, and the second part of this uh, is just how, how we display the balances uh, when you have a, a, a certain amount of uh, a, yeah, a slightly different balance between an anchor block uh, and a micro block. So in a few moments, we should see the pending go away, which means it's going out of the mempool into a um, micro block. And then we should be able to see the uh, balance UI. There you go. So you can see the um, same icon Farage showed you in the uh, Explorer. This means that this is in, has been picked up in a microblock. And here you see two balances, uh, the one which is, um, yeah, the two balances. So yeah, that's it from the web wallet side of things. Great. You want to discuss the state management proposal as well? Sure, yeah, um, there's not much to go into here, really. Um, simply that uh, last week we had some discussions um, to try and address a uh, few things, really, just sort of like, uh, you know, the, the team's understanding of uh, state management and, and how we sort of um, manage all of the data flows throughout the uh, application um, and sort of a, um, a proposal to move to using um, React query, uh, which we already kind of do in some respect, but just in a slightly diff different manner. My turn. Uh, yeah, go for it. Um, just a second, let's see. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through this PR that was done. Um, basically, previously we didn't display any information around kind of the mode that a transaction can be in related to post conditions. And just for context, uh, someone can sign a transaction and if it's in the deny mode for post conditions, that means 
any post condition defined, which essentially are a set of rules for what assets can be transferred away. Uh, if it's at the deny mode, if something were to not kind of satisfy those boundaries, it would cancel the transaction and prevent it from functioning. Uh, whereas you can sign transactions that are in allow mode. And what that does is it basically just ignores those completely and allows anything to happen. Um, so as an interim step, you know, we're now kind of displaying when a transaction is set to allow mode. And you can kind of see here that we have this nice little warning that says the transaction is not secure. And basically this tries to educate a little bit that, you know, if you do, sometimes it's, it might make sense to, to sign this, maybe if you did it, or if you really trust kind of the contract you're using, but 99% of the time you probably don't want to, or at least double or triple check. Yeah, that's about it. Great. Moving on to onboarding. Let me share my screen again. Yeah, so kind of the next, I think, project that we're working on is redesigning onboarding. So I just kind of started some of the work um, getting a feature branch kind of set up with that. So this is kind of the first um, screen. Uh, that we've done. Um, so you can just see here it's set up in the full page and then getting the actual pop up set up too. So, fairly straightforward work, but um, yeah, we'll make kind of implementing that stuff a little bit faster. So, it's starting to look good. Awesome. Thank you. Finally, post conditions. So this is not actually about post conditions a little bit. It's actually about the, uh, the function arguments. So currently, if you go to sign a transaction, it will look like this. We will display all the, the arguments and the particular function that you're calling. And the arguments are essentially the, the inputs to the contract, the inputs you're giving to the contract. So um, if I wanted to register Farah.btc, I would tell the contract I want Farah.btc. That would be one of the arguments. The problem though, is that many of them are completely indecipherable to many normal people who don't know what any of this means. Some of them are actually all right, like uh, these numbers right here or these addresses, they should be easy, relatively easy for people to understand. And then some are, some are complete gibberish. So how do we deal with that? So this is what this draft kind of addresses. There's some, some other stuff too, like the subtitle and this transfers card. So we're focusing primarily on the function and arguments. So here's a draft where the first idea was to just hide the arguments by default, unless you have opened it previously, and then we'll keep it open. The problem is that the arguments are actually uh, very helpful and you want to make sure that the right arguments are passed, but they're hard to decipher. So how do we deal with that? Well, one thing we can do is that we can um, translate arguments from something like this, micro stacks, to something that is more easy to understand for people. So this 54 uh, million would become 54. And then secondly, we have uh, updated subtitle because this part is now gone, the function you're calling. So that's now in the subtitle. And there's kind of a redundancy here between SDX and SDX. So we update that. Um, this is your address, which is redundant. So we replace that with your balance. And then here's how it would look for something like Swapper. And here's a version for BNS. And then here it is with it open. So currently these are like uh, uh, gibberish essentially. So if we translate these, it will be pretty cool to show these by default. Then if we scroll down, we see the salt in the zone file hash, which to probably 99% of people is meaningless. So one thing we are exploring is kind of figuring out which arguments are understandable and then show those and then have it kind of an option to expand and show more. And that's when we show um, the stuff that is hard to understand. 
that way you kind of get the best of both worlds. Here's how it looks if there if it's in deny mode but no transfers compared to how it looks right now. And then here is allow mode, which was just demoed. And then we also have the settings. So this is kind of an advanced thing. It allows you to update the nonce because sometimes there's an issue with the nonce being incorrect, uh, as well as the fees if you want to replace by fee. But looks like we're going to turn this into more of a, a fee market to help with the congestion. So we're going to explore a little bit more on how to do better setting of fees. Yeah, that's it. Great. It's a wrap.